Do you want to add more objects to your game world to make it feel more full, but you're concerned about the effect it's going to have on your frame rate? Well today, I want to talk about a technique that can maybe help out with that. Hi, I'm Mike, and today I want to talk to you about a technique or a tool that might help you add a lot more game objects to your scene without overly affecting your frame rate. Uh, and that technique is something called batching or batching draw calls. Like most tools, it's not something that is going to help in every situation, but hopefully with this video you will understand how it works and therefore when it might be most useful for you to pull out to use in your games. So let's take a brief step back and talk about how rendering works. In general, in most game engines, objects are placed in a, a scene, for example, and these objects have a position, a rotation, a scale, and a model associated with it. This information is then passed on to the rendering engine, or like the graphics card. Math is done and then it's displayed on screen. And this happens with every object in the scene. So if you have thousands of objects, this process happens thousands of times. And if you're drawing the same object over and over again, you still have to pass all of the information every time. And this can add up and lead to a pretty serious bottleneck in your frame rate. So what's the solution? Before we get to that, let's go with a bit of a practical example to try and illustrate what the problem is and what a solution could be. So we'll take this scene here. Instead of a computer drawing a forest scene, it will be me. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take this image of a tree here that I already have set up, copy, and we'll paste it into the scene and we'll place it where we want it to be. And then next to the tree, we're going to add a rock. So we'll go to this rock, grab the file, copy and paste it in here. Uh, adjust it until we like it. And then next to that is another tree. So we'll go back to the tree scene, copy and paste that, and place it into, into the scene next to the rock. And then we'll just keep repeating this process until we feel the scene is complete. Now you might be wondering to yourself, wouldn't it be faster if I just copy and pasted the, all of the trees at once before moving them around? And the answer to that is yes, it probably would have been much faster. And that's the concept of batching. You are providing the model information to the uh, graphics card or the rendering engine once, along with a list of places to put it. And while this is a great way to save some frame rate if you're drawing the same object many thousands of times in the scene, it's not without its drawbacks. The main one that I can think of is that if you have all of your draw calls being batched like this, you still have to draw all 1,000 of them, even if you can only see, say, two. Take for example the situation where a character is inside of a building looking out a window, and you can see two trees out there. If they are all batched together, you still have to draw the rest of the 1,000 trees uh, at the same time, but there are ways to mitigate that. Uh, the primary one that I can think of being something called object pooling, which is a subject for another video. Now, if you're working in Godot, there's actually a tool that's already implemented, a node that you can use in place of the mesh instance, and it's called the multi-mesh instance. Now, it does take a little bit more work to set up the mesh instance node, but for me, rule of thumb is if I'm already starting to place things procedurally using uh, an algorithm of sorts, that's probably when I would start to consider using the multi-mesh instance over the mesh instance. So if we head over to Godot now, I'll show you what my the scene is and give you a quick demonstration of how I have set it up and the benefits of using a multi-mesh instance versus a mesh instance. So it doesn't look like much. Basically, it's just an empty scene with a camera. Uh, if we take a look here at the scene tree, I have a couple of nodes here, one spatial node with a script attached that will generate and add a number of small green boxes. Currently I have it set to 15,000, and as a bit of a forewarning if you are following along at home, I've set this up so it taxes my system, and I just had to rebuild it re so I'm pretty up to date with a lot of the tech, so start lower. Start at around 1,000, um, see how much that affects your computer, and then go up from there. So I have the mesh instance node. If we take a look at the script here, it will generate the number of small boxes that we have set in the variable. And in the process, you can see it just spins around slowly. And that's just so that the draw call keeps getting made. So we can see how much it affects the performance in the example. The other thing here is the multi-mesh instance. And if we hop into the script here, we can see it's very similar. So the big difference here is instead of instantiating and adding a bunch of child nodes that are boxes, we're just 
generating a list of transforms that we're going to pass to the multi-mesh instance. And then I have a quick debug menu here so that we can just toggle between the multi-mesh instance and the mesh instance and the readout of the engine's FPS. Now, as you can see here, the 15,000 cube meshes, uh, the green ones that are the just mesh instances, drops the frame rate down to something pretty low. It's 12, 13 here. But if we toggle over to the multi-mesh instance, we can see with 30,000 instances, it's at the max refresh rate of my monitor, basically, 144. So I hope that's been helpful to you uh, in seeing the power of batching draw calls and in Godot using the multi-mesh instance versus just a mesh instance. So if you've made it this far in the video and have found it helpful, hitting the like button is a great way to help get the video out to a wider audience. And if you're interested in more tutorial stuff from me, might I suggest these Shaders 101 video that I've done. That's it for me for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and good luck with your projects. I'll see you next time.